morning, we saw a video of how a child was able to save a village. In the video just now, we were able to see that a child can have the dedication and wisdom that many of us strive for. And now here, live at the retreat, we actually have with us a very special guest who can show all of these attributes. Everyone, please help welcome Brother Christopher. Good morning, Master Chen Yen, all of the masters in the boat, and everyone here today. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you for coming today and giving me this chance to dis express some of my learnings from Master Chen Yen through Engli the English language. Sometimes I remember, I have this app that tells me what happened a few years ago or maybe a century ago at this day. And yesterday I was browsing through that app and thank you. <laughs> And I found Nelson Mandela on list. This day, or yesterday, I'd like to honor Nelson Mandela for his great, exceptional work as a president. He really led South Africa to a new place because he was also a remarkable, the first president in South Africa to be, to be um, an African-American man. And yesterday was the 21st year since that day in July 18th, 1994. When I was reading some paragra sentences, um, paragraphs online, I found this paragraph that really was a really deep, had a really deep meaning that I never noticed before. And it reads, a man whose life and political choices enabled South Africans of all race to, ex to glimpse the elusive nirvana of society free from the painful divisions. And this is actually describing Nelson Mandela, and this was a quote taken from the Prospect magazine. But two words in this paragraph really stood out to me, and that was nirvana and choices. And they two have a really close connection together. Last year in Taiwan, I remember that I made a vow to actually try to get done with college, graduate from college in six years. And it was a hard path to get through because I had to kind of change how I learned to ho a homeschool style. And a couple of days ago, I found myself kind of feeling a bit depressed. And that was because I had a lot of pressure from all of the math, the physics, and parabolas, and everything like that, which really kind of made me feel like I was done with this. And eventually, emotion kind of crushed my reasonability, which made which made me feel really unstable in my own standing. And this really is suffering. Suffering that makes us feel so depressed and so uncomfortable in this world. So to many people in the Western culture, being able to relieve that pressure is like going to a massage or disconnecting from the world. So it's not a surprising thing to find a lot of people who have a lot of pressure go to spas and try to relax. And that's because they have this reference that nirvana, or releasing all of the pressure, comes from disconnecting from the world and disconnecting from all of the pressure sources they have. One day I was kind of searching through Google and I f searched nirvana. And I noticed that there was a supermarket called Nirvana in India, which kind of surprised me. How would a Nirvana word 
can connect to a supermarket because it's, it's just kind of weird. <laughs> so I started to question, what is Nirvana? And why is it so popular in names? There's a Nirvana restaurant in San Francisco, and there's a bunch of Nirvana chain stores that do spas on people. Obviously, there is a confusion between what Nirvana is and what peace is. And before I ex kind of explain what Nirvana is, I would like to explain what isn't Nirvana. And we all probably experience this in our schools, if you are still in school, or in our jobs, if you go to work. In Buddhism, there are six roots that actually make us feel that way. And I have a small activity for you, which you'll probably find pretty easily and do easily. But first, point to your eye, okay? That's the first root. Point to your nose or your ear. That's the second root. And your nose is the third root. Your tongue is the fourth root. And the last two are body and mind. These are the six roots that are the fundamental ways we connect to the world. And many people use these as the, a way they can connect with other people and transmit information. But sometimes people misuse these six roots and it becomes something that's pretty sad and it's greed. Some people have impure thoughts in their mind and when they connect with the outside world, they end up with a lot of greed for money and for objects that they may not even use. But this is actually something that makes our heart dark. And it's the dark corners of our heart that make us so painful. So before we get too into this, I'd like to explain how we can change this and how we can bring us ourselves to the next level. And this comes from a really simple equation, which is impure roots plus the connection to the world results in afflictions. This is true because last time my experience with depression and a lot of pressure came from an impure root thinking that I had to do these things and I didn't like them. And I connected to the world, which was all of my classes, which resulted in my strong affliction. But as long as you give up your impure roots, your impure thoughts, eventually afflictions will go away. And that is what leaves you nirvana. Master Chenyan once said, eliminating the darkness of our heart and preserving tranquility in our soul creates the moment of nirvana. This is a really strong sentence because many people in the world believe that nirvana is being dead, disconnected from the world, and without any pressure. But there is a way that we can stay in the world and still experience nirvana without any disconnections or any special moves. And to be quick about this, connecting with the world without impurities is what nirvana is. I'd like to mention Isaac Newton's laws of physics. He had three of them about motion. And one of them was an object with motion stays in motion in this, with the same speed and in the same direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. But I think that we can also reform this to something that's more suitable in our place right now. And that is afflictions will continue to burn until its source is acted upon an unbalanced a terminating force. And this terminating force is really our goal, our goal for our life and our goal for Buddhism and cultivation. 
And this terminating force is what gives us power to move on and get, get back to our roots. We have stepped into our first right step in the right place and in the right time. And this is the most important step toward our cultivation. But we also have a mission too. In Tsuchi, we have a mission to bring nirvana to everyone in this world. It's not only a matter of giving ourselves peace and tranquility, but it's also sharing that with everyone we see and the seven billion people in our world population. So in a different way, we can explain that terminating force is the terminating force toward afflictions of everyone in this world. And it's the terminating force of all of the disasters that come from our mind. Because of this, we can really see power in a lot of This is something that we can share with everyone, and it's a, an experience that we should all experience. So, I want to share a story with you, and that's a story that kind of is my own experience with Nirvana. Last year, I was able to be the co-chair of the technology committee in my school. And at the time, I had a higher rank um, chair of our committee that really didn't work with me well. He used to reject all of my plans. He would kind of scold me for my plans. And one time, I wanted to bring a few, few computers downstairs, and he rejected it too. I, I started to get a bit mad at him. And I wanted to get back to him by shouting at him or whatever I thought at the time. But I thought of Master Chen Yen's teaching, which means that we should not use a sh pushing force to teach others or to cooperate with others, but use a way that we do not make bad connections with others, but still teach them and still guide them to the right path. And I really like that quote because it let me think back think before I spoke, and it made me think of how I could change my way of expressing my feelings. And I'd like to say that that is true power. It's true power in our world, and we can all use it in our daily basis. This morning, Master Chen Yan mentioned that demons in our hearts originate from the reproduction of afflictions. And this is a quick reminder from Master Chen Yan that in our cultivation process, we will encounter demons, we will encounter afflictions that are trying to make us, trying to disturb, disturb us from our cultivation. But my message today is don't let that disturb you and use it as a challenge. And that's also what I'm learning every day from Master Chen Yan. And the only way and the only thing that, you should not, that we should not do is avoid challenges and try to run away from them. Because challenges are a way, are a process of our cultivation and it moves us to the next level. So I like to go back to my first example of emotion and reasonability. When emotion takes over reasonability, that's the most dangerous part of our life because we have lost our, sta our sturdy stand and we can easily stray away. Our job is to overcome demons and also overcome it, share it, share the way of doing it to everyone in the world. And I believe that everyone here can all do it through our Master Chen Yan's teachings and the path in Su Chi. And as long as we keep working at this, Nirvana will not be a disconnection from the world, but a renewed connection to the universe. 
And I hope that the next time you walk on this path, please remember to push on and also not, be, not to let demons overcome us. Because by only that, we can actually go back to our roots. And that's the true meaning of cultivation and Suji's path. This is also the roots of Buddha nature. And it makes us clean. And it also moves us to world peace. The population keeps on increasing every day and every second. But our goal is to, teach, is to help those 7 billion people out there that are waiting for us. So let's not wait, let them have any more waits and get to the work so that we can overcome self-demon and inspire others. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Christopher, for your wonderful sharing.